Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If y'all remember from last week, I had a whole birthday party. It should be playing right here. Um, it was a small birthday picnic, but I did make this really cool basket. This one right here. And it's just upcycled. It's an Ikea basket, but I thought maybe y'all would like to figure out how I made it. So today I will be teaching you how to make an Ikea basket. So we are going to start off with one wicker box and some twine. Uh, this box is really nothing special, just a lid and a bottom, pretty minimal, but we are going to be transforming it into a maximalist picnic basket. First, we're gonna start off with the hinges or attaching the lid to the box, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, you're going to count the holes from the corner in until you find a spot you like. I did about seven holes in. And then you're gonna do the same for the lid. Go ahead and pull a good amount of twine just until you feel like you have enough and then cut it off. Uh, go ahead and do a little bit more than you think you'll need. You're then gonna stick the twine in through both of the two openings that you found, the one on the top and the one on the bottom. Making sure that um, the, both of the twine endings are on the inside. And then just just gonna go ahead and wrap it around and around, feeding it in through both of the holes until that it attaches and you feel like it's sturdy enough that it's gonna hold the lid together to the bottom. Sometimes it gets a little tricky with those little openings because they're a little small, but you just have to give it a little bit of time, nothing major. I did this about four times. And then go ahead and tie it off. Uh, knot it a couple of times for good measure and then cut your excess twine. This box is slowly turning into a picnic basket, just like I'm slowly turning into an adult, I think. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the other side. Go ahead and count the same number of holes that you did from the other side on this side to make it even. And then we're gonna feed the twine in through the outside so that both of the ends are on the inside just like we did last time. And then just go ahead and wrap it and wrap it around and around just like before. And ta-da! An attached top and bottom. Perfect. We have one, two, open and close. Perfect. And now we're going to do the front latch closure. So go ahead and find the middle of your bottom and then two spots on the lid on either side of the middle of that middle that you chose. Uh, thread a section of the twine through the top two holes and let enough twine stick out that it can go around the point on the bottom that you chose. So it should look a little bit like that if you pull it taut. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and wrap the ends of your twine around the two openings just a few times to secure it, similarly to how we did it on the back. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mark on the twine where I want it to stick out so that I don't pull in um, more than I meant to whenever I start wrapping it. I know it's a pretty crucial part of the video, but I did kind of forget that I had to be in frame in order for you to see what I was doing. So I know it gets a little bit hard. Um, we're not doing anything super major. All we're gonna do is just keep wrapping it around, pulling it in through the two holes in the top until we have it secure and until it feels sturdy, just like in the back. Just like we did before, tie it a couple of times and then just go ahead and snip that excess right off. Now don't you worry about those two little pieces of excess twine and the other ones that you had over there. We're gonna be using those pretty soon. Go ahead and check that to make sure that it fits perfectly, that it's at a good length for you. And then take those leftover pieces and start knotting them. These are gonna be our knot closure that is gonna go through that little latch that we just made. Just knot, knot, knot. Not until you can't knot anymore, not like your life depends on it. Once you have a good size knot, go ahead and test it out just to see. Make sure it's big enough that the twine won't slip right off of it. 
and then stick, stick it through some holes and knot the backs together. The good thing about a box full of holes is that it, you're never at a loss for one. Your knot should fit pretty snugly through your lasso latch thing that we made for the top. We want it to keep our basket closed, so it should feel tight. But if it doesn't, it's no big deal. There's no wrong ways to make this basket, just avant-garde ways, just new ways. But whatever you have, it works. Now you have a closing basket. Now, for the main attraction, our basket handles. Because there is no picnic without some nice handles, am I right? So, <laughs> for me, I wanted to make my handles fairly long so that I could hold them both from the top, uh, center top of my basket. Measure out some twine so that it's long enough to reach down to where you want the handles to attach on the bottom part of your basket. And then give it a little bit of extra. Go ahead and cut it when you feel like you have a good length. And then cut it a few more times. You're going to need about six pieces of twine cut to the same length for each side of your basket. So you'll need six for this side and then six for the handles on the other side. Now go ahead and figure out where you think your handles would look best. Do you want the sides close together or far apart? Up to you. After you figure it out, split the six pieces of twine into two groups. Three pieces of twine in each group. And then find the right holes to put it through. Separate it into the three. And then go ahead and put it through some holes. And then tie off the back of it. Since these handles are going to be what we're going to be carrying our basket with, they are going to take on a little bit of weight depending on what you decide to put in your basket. Uh, so you want to make sure they're pretty sturdy just to be safe. Secure it a couple of times, maybe more than a couple of times, maybe three or four. And then once you feel like that's good, this is where the tricky part comes, which isn't super tricky, but it is something. I wanted my handles to look wrapped, but I guess you could braid them if you wanted to. There's no wrong way to do this. Uh, to wrap them, you're going to take the six pieces of twine, put them together, and then separate the two outer pieces. So take the one on the left side and the one on the right side. Once you have those two, go ahead and take either one, doesn't matter which side, and wrap it all the way completely around until it's back on the side that you started with. So if you started on the left, it should end on the left. And then take the one on the other side, so if that's the right for you, take that one and then wrap it all the way around. And then do that again. Take the one on the left and then wrap it completely around until that piece ends up on the left. And then take the one on the right until it ends up on the right. And just continue to do that. You're going to be wrapping for a few minutes, my friend. I hope that made sense. If not, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try to do a better job of explaining it to you all written down. There is no need for this basket to be perfect. There is no need for these handles to be perfect. Mine definitely were not, but they're still pretty good. They still help me carry my basket around and they look pretty decent too. Just go ahead and wrap, wrap, wrap as well as you can. A pro tip that I did figure out is that um, your strings do get shorter the more that you wrap around. So whenever you start noticing that your outer strings are a little bit too short, go ahead and just grab a different string from the inside. It doesn't really matter, you won't be able to tell. And start wrapping that one around. No one will know. No one will know that you traded out your strings. There's no way for them to know. After what feels like an eternity of wrapping, you'll have a basket handle that looks like this. Congratulations, you've made rope. A fine accomplishment, to be sure. One of the select few who would possibly survive in the wild or the dystopian Hunger Games style world we're rapidly approaching. Go ahead and check to see if your rope is long enough. It's probably not, but you're gonna go ahead and check anyway. And once it is long enough, or once you've checked several times and you've given up and you don't wanna go anymore, Separate the six pieces back into the groups of three, just two groups, two of the groups, and find your favorite openings to be your handle holders, and feed the twine right back in, which is sometimes a little bit harder than it looks. Those holes are pretty small, and this twine that I used was a little bit kind of thick, 
Well, I'll flick them so it does get a little hard. But once you finally get it in there, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> once, once you finally get it back in there, um, you just have to tie the backs off. And there you have it. A masterpiece, a one of a kind creation. It's beautiful, you did great, it's lovely. And now you just have to do it on the other side. Just two more hours of wrapping that string, huh? Nah, it's not two hours. But once you have that, there it is, bing bang boom, a completed 21st century vintage style maximalist picnic basket that is handy dandy and handmade by you for you, a queen or king. And just begging to be taken out on a picnic. Look at you. Go live your aesthetic dreams. You got this. If y'all wanna see more crafting videos, let me know. I make a lot of things, so I would be happy to oblige. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like or a comment. And if you wanna keep seeing what I do, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.